Let's take a look at a way to organize the results of a possible situation. Let's say that we're flipping a coin, right? We have two possibilities of events that could happen when flipping a coin. We could flip it and it could be a heads, or we could flip it and it could be a tails. Now, that's a pretty simple situation, but let's say that we're gonna be flipping this coin multiple times, and we wanna know what are the chances of certain events happening. One way to keep that straight is to have an organized list of all of our results. We can do that with something called a tree diagram, something that you learned about last year. Tree diagrams always start with the word start. And we have, in this instance of flipping a coin, two possibilities, meaning we need to have two branches coming off from the start. It might be a heads that comes out when we flip it, or it might be a tails. What we've just created, if we've created basically what would happen of one flip of this coin. Okay? Pretty basic. But let's say we flip it a second time. We have to always remember that something has already happened if we're flipping it a second time, namely the first flip. So we have to start by saying we already got a head or we got a tail. Now what might occur? Well, if we got a head, we pick up the coin again and flip it, we might get another head. We might get a tail this time. So we have to say from this first flip, we might get another head. We might get another tail. Again, two branches from this second flip. However, we have to consider that that first flip was a tail. If the first flip was a tail, there are still two possibilities. You might get a head, you might get a tail. So we have to branch this one off as well. And now we have what are our options for two flips? Okay, head followed by a head. We might get a head first, a tail second, a tail first, a head second, or two tails. And we can keep on this method for as many flips as what we need and then determine probability based on that. Let's try it one more time. We could get a head, a head, and then a third head. We could get a head first, a head second, a tail third. And let me fill in the rest of these. This would be our number three flip. Now, let's take a look at this. After three flips, we can then determine some probabilities. We could say, for instance, what is the probability, capital P, of getting all heads? Well, we can now look at our tree diagram to determine that. We could say, well, head, head, head happens right here. That's one way of doing it. There are no other branches that have all heads in them. So we have one option out of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like there are eight possible outcomes getting all heads was one thing out of that eight. Let's take a second example. Let's say, what's the probability of getting a tail, a tail, and then a head? Well, tail first, tail second, head third, happens right over here, and it doesn't happen anywhere else in our tree diagram. So again, that possibility is one thing out of eight. Let's look at a third and final example. What is the probability of getting at least one head? At least one head. Well, that means we're okay with getting one head, we're okay with getting two heads, we're okay with getting three heads. So we would say, yep, yeah, that's one possibility that has at least one head. This one does, this one does, this one does. There's four outcomes. We're okay here. There's one head with another. Here's one head. Here's one head. Really, the only one that doesn't fall under this category would be the tail, tail, tail. So we would say the probability of getting at least one head would be seven things out of eight. And this tree diagram helps us see that very clearly and helps us come up with those answers in a fairly efficient way.